we really see this as our project together. This is a pan-Canadian initiative and we want to develop it as something that belongs to all of us. And while the Caledon Institute has been hosting uh, the Canada Social Report and has been developing this work, we hope to be working with you over time to really make this into something that we will use together. And um, we will talk with you at the end of the presentation about your participation, about your comments, about what you need and how you can become involved in this work. But uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for the opportunity to talk about this today and to do a general overview at this point of the Canada Social Report. So um, before we get into our little uh, ride that we'll take you through today in terms of, you know, what does this look like and how do you navigate and, you know, how do you actually use the Canada Social Report, there's a few introductory remarks that we'd like to make about this effort. First of all, we call this project the Canada Social Report, but I have to say this is not a single report. It's not a report in the traditional sense of the word. All of us are involved in writing reports for various purposes. We write reports for the public or for you know sending to uh, politicians or to the media. We sometimes write reports for our board of directors. Certainly corporations do this and produce annual reports. This is not a report in the traditional sense of the word and it's quite different from the reports that we typically publish at Caledon. In fact, we've tried to keep this as, a, as an entirely separate initiative and while there is a link to our website, this is a brand new website because it, it really is um, you know, intended to be separate from the rest of our work, although of course linked intrinsically to it. So um, it's not a single report actually a set of reports and you know we debated what to call it and somehow because it really is a compendium or it's an umbrella of a wide range of various sources of social and economic information but somehow the term Canada Social Compendium didn't quite cut it for us and neither did Canada Social Almanac, Canada Social Monitor, Canada Social Reports we tried a number of, um, you know, of different possibilities. So here we are with this, and we thought, okay, well, we'll just explain it to people and say this is a little bit different. So it's a combination of data sources, and we're going to be going through those data sources with you as an overview. We really can understand it as a national portal to key social and economic data and information. And um, you know, typically with a report you can actually download and you publish. We're not going to be publishing anything formally from the Canada Social Report, but you certainly are entitled to produce, to print, to make links to anything on that website. That report, those reports and that data is really for you to use. So the only thing that we would ask is that you make reference to the source, who, where you obtain the information, or if you are citing from a third-party source, because you will see that we have made links to a number of organizations and we are actually you know, partnering with them to use their data and use their reports, we would ask you that you actually cite the material. But other than that, we are not asking for any contribution. It is part of our principle to make this material accessible. And so, um, you know, we, we have uh, just made this as an open site. And again, hope that we will have your contribution. Why is it important? Why did we uh, want to do a Canada Social Report? Many of you have heard about the problems that we've experienced with respect to data in Canada. We had the announcement of the withdrawal of the long-form census in the country back in 2010, and that was a serious concern, of course, because that census provided a great deal of important economic uh, and social information to help us understand who we are. It also 
also provided a gold standard barometer against which to measure other kinds of or to judge the quality of other surveys that we have in the country. At the same time, there were other sources of data that were being withdrawn. For example, the Participation and Activity Limitation Survey on Disability. Now, that since has been replaced by uh, another survey, but you know we're not quite sure at this point about what will be produced when and about the quality of the data. So we'll see what happens with that. In 2012, the federal government announced that it was dismantling the National Council of Welfare, and we knew with the, that dismantling that we would see a loss of a lot of important information that we have been involved actually in developing in the past. And um, so for all these reasons, we thought we really have to you know, step up to the plate and do something about the fact that we're losing data in Canada. But even if none of that had happened, even in the absence of, you know, any uh, changes to the current data, I think that this would have been an important initiative for us to undertake. And in fact, we had talked about it for many years.